Well, this is going to be a video about how to redneck style unseize a seize motor. Wow, this van has been seriously mudded. Anyways, it ran fine until they didn't know that they had hit a rock the last time they drove it. And it took a little puncture in the oil pan which took all week to leak out. So, they went for their next week's cruise, the back 40. Well, anyways, they made it right about there by that white tree. That's when their motor seized up. Well, when motors seize up with lack of oil, it's a 99% chance that it's seized up on the crankshaft. The bearings melt and melt themselves right to the crankshaft. Wow. Looks like that's displaying we got some problems. So anyways, the air conditioning's working great. I can feel the breeze blowing through here peacefully. I see all those redneck diamonds all over the floor. I'm gonna see if we can unseize this pig. Why not? It's four-wheel drive. What more could you ask for out here? And so, I believe that the floppy cock will rise again to life. Well, I've got to give it its first direction with a tractor to get it out of that spot. Ready to roll. Chained up and ready for a rumble. Because it's four wheel drive, when I push it, it makes the front wheels turn. Thought for me. See a Dodge minivan with a differential in the back? In the Ooh, plastic gas tanks, gotta love it. Pinched off rear brake lines, of course. Who needs rear brakes at Day's Farm? Free flowing exhaust system. And as you can see, a munched oil pan and the little breach in the security where it leaked out. So let's hope it's not too hard to get this oil pan off so I can make this damn video. I want to see this thing live again. You won't believe how I'm going to do it. It's, it's just so naughty. <laughs> if you're a mechanic, don't try this at home. Well, I guess if this unusual job is successful, I'll have to pound all those dents out of the oil pan with that. Ready for removal. All the bolts are out. Well, looks pretty normal so far. Now we got to pull some rod caps off. Well, that oil pan's wrinkly than my scrotum. Now we're going to start popping some main bearing caps off to decide whether it's seized on the main bearings or the rod bearings. Great. My piece of shit socket just broke. Take two different socket. This one's Mastercraft. I 
I just popped off the first rod cap and the bearing looks like it's welded to the crankshaft. If I see the little oiler hole, it looks like it's got melted debris in it. So this thing seized on the rods. Not a big deal, except when your engine seized and the rods are in this position, way back in there, it's hard to get the bolts off to unseize it. But we'll figure out a way. Well, the hole is a bit plugged, but that's the reverse squirter hole that squirts the pistons. It's at the bottom. There's another squirter hole at the top. Uh, this engine's lightly seized, so if I loosen all the rod caps, maybe I can get it turning. Now for another one. Oh, more bad news. See the lines across there? See the seam? The seam should be lined up with this edge. Instead, it's not. So this one's called a spun bearing. I can still save it my redneck method. Wait till you see how I do it. And this bearing's in much worse shape. Really scored. At least there's no melted crap in the oil journal hole. I'm going to have to drill out these little oil squirter holes. Well, the third one I pulled off is melted, but not spun. So just what I expected. Now I know I can make this bitch run. <laughs> just to suffer more abuse so I, it can die another death. Well, now that we're getting to the serious nitty gritty of fixing this seized crankshaft, I've got my first rod disconnected. It's, you know, piston rod. This was the bearing that went on the top side of the rod like that. As you can see, it looks like there was a hole there once, but it's full of melted babbit, which is what this bearing's made out of. And you can't see the hole on this side, just a bit of scoring. Well, I get my trusty drill, and I re-drill that hole. That hole's very important because as you can see, the oil coming out, the oil hole coming out of the crankshaft journal, it lines up with a hole that's in the rod and that squirts oil onto the piston and the wrist pin to keep the engine lubricated. So if you just put the bearings back together, then of course your engine will seize up on the pistons a short while later. What we do is we clean the back side of this bearing. We clean the inside of the rod and the rod cap really well with lacquer thinner and a paper towel. Then we put some Loctite on it, torque it up really good, and put a little bit of gear oil on the journals. Believe this or not, once you get Loctite that's on these parts, let it set up for a couple days. These bearings will not spin again and they will not slip. This engine will hold together for a long time and a lot of high revs. Now that's drilled out as good as new. I just made sure the little hole in there was cleaned out too. Now I've cleaned the surface. Now I just got to put this shit on. Here we go. Doesn't take too much. Now I just got to spread that shit around. Sweet. Little green goo will do. Now to put this on. Be very careful when you put the green goo on the top side that you don't get any around that hole. You don't want to plug up that hole and seize up that piston in the future. Well, now I've got a glob of gear lube on the end of my screwdriver. And we have to apply it to the journal. And when that's put together, you just lightly torque it until the whole engine is completely done and turning freely, and then you torque everything up final. <laughs> 